Welcome to the 2022 Fall Media Days for the Douglas County School System. I'm proud to introduce the head coach of the Douglas County Tigers, Coach Johnny White. Uh, coach White is the dean of our Douglas County coaches. He's been uh, with us how many years? This will make you number seven. You're we'll number seven. seven. All right, welcome. And uh, he's well known around the state. Uh, a very successful coach and a good guy as well. So I appreciate you. Uh, hanging in there and uh, teaching our kids in Douglas County about the game of football and building future leaders as well. Mm -hmm. So I want you to just talk a little bit about your forecast for this uh, school year and then we'll follow up from there, Coach. Thank okay. you. Um, this upcoming school year, I mean, this upcoming football season, we are expecting to uh, take another step on the ladder. Uh, we've been here, like this year seven, we have four playoff appearances. Two of those years, we made it to the second round. So now we're trying to get to the third round. We want to take it week by week, realizing that every game is important. Uh, the great thing about this team is even though we were eight and four last year, we only had maybe five seniors. So we have 10 returning starters on offense and eight on defense. So I feel real good about, about the way we're doing. We just got to work hard. Uh, we're going to be very good in the special teams game. Uh, Zach Valdez is a kicker who uh, did a little bit of kicking for us last year, but he's been in the weight room with us just like a regular player, and he's done a phenomenal job. So, like I said, if we can stay injury-free, play together, play with a little swag, and take it week by week, I think we'll have a great season. I'm going to ask you, uh, we know about your skilled guys on offense stuff. Kind of talk about your offensive line and how is that shifting? Um, right now, we, we uh, Josh uh, going to probably start – Maybe a freshman at center, uh, Chase Madu, him and Amar Kelly are going for that spot. Uh, both guards are coming back. We're going to depend highly on Draylon Jones and Joshua Morrell. Uh, Devin Jackson also started last year at tackle. Our other tackle, uh, Andrew Bennett, right now, um, he's in flux because he may have to move. So we're asking Ladarian Williams and Levine Alvarez. It's going to be a fight. Uh, the main thing we're trying to get right now is competition at every position every day. Uh, defensive line, of course, uh, Corey Jordan, who was a starter last year as a sophomore, is back. Travis McMahon, who was a starter as a junior, is back. And Zach uh, Keith, Zachariah Keith, who was a starter, who's all state and is a commit to Georgia Tech, is back. So we, real, we feel real good up front. Um, my thing right now is to try to find 10 offensive linemen to rotate. And ten, and 10 to 12 defensive linemen to rotate. I think if we get those numbers, well, we'll be fine. A uh, name to remember, I think, was going to be very good for us on the line this year is also Al Samaj uh, Johnson, who's a rising junior. If these kids have totally bought in like, I, like we think we have, I think we have a good shot of being good. Uh, like you said, Lou George is running your defense, a former head coach, mm -hmm. uh, your strength and conditioning coach, mm -hmm. brings a lot of energy. Talk about the energy that uh, he's brought a lot of energy and he's brought attention to detail. Um, this is probably in my seventh year, the least amount of time I've spent on defense since I've been at Douglas County. Uh, he does a great job. He's a motivator. Uh, he works hard. He works with these kids. And right now, the, the, the emphasis for this, for this summer for us is effort. Yeah. I don't care if you mess up, we're going to 11 hats to the ball. If we can get 11 hats to the ball every play, then I think we'll have a good defense. And like I told them yesterday, it's not like that defense played great last year and sometimes. I mean, we won some games where we gave up 30, 35 points. So we have a lot of improvement that we got to make. And if that happens, I think we'll be good on defense as well. Quinn gets a full year as yeah, this, offense. Th yeah, this is his first. Can I talk about? Yes, first full year as offense coordinator. He did a great job last year after Smith got the promotion and moved to Griffin. But now it's definitely his show. Uh, the kids now understand what he wants and what he expects. And it's also going to be beneficial for us because even though he was the offensive coordinator last year, he was still at Stewart. So it's going to be great to have him in the building with us as well. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, talk about your receivers, Deuce and uh, Monte. Uh, you got uh, Hilton Alexander. You have uh, who's a Wake Forest commit. You have Monte Gooden who's got a couple of offers. You have James Johnson who was a freshman that blew up at the end of the year. Uh, Brandon Ellison. It's good, and then we're going to also take a couple of defensive guys and put them at the slot as well. Um, I'm looking forward, forward to seeing Israel Boyce play a little bit both ways, as well as uh, Caleb Bridges. Um, so a couple of young guys, I think Braxton, McLester, and maybe more Robs can help us out. So I'm looking forward. I mean, if we get them, if we get them the balls in space. If we get them the ball in space, I think we're going to do well. Uh, 
came out of a good region, but you're in a good region now. Yeah. Uh, talk about the region and how you see D.C. I mean, it's week by week. You know, the problem we've had in the past is, you know, I told them uh, on Monday, we got to get over that six-game plateau. I've been here six years, and believe it or not, in those six years, we've had four six-game winning streaks, and we've ended up losing game seven. Whether it was the first game, I noticed uh, 2017, six in a row, lost game seven. 2018, lost the first game, went six in a row, lost game eight. Uh, the year we lost the part in game six. This year we lost the soft part in game six. So I think a lot of that is them smelling their roses. <laughs> you know, so we got to take it week by week now. If we can get to six this year, that means we've really done something because we have McEachin early, we have Alexander early, and we have Langston Hughes. And, of course, Langston Hughes is going to definitely start off number one in the state. Um, they've been ranked as high as some national polls as 17. Uh, Georgia football has them 17th in the country. Uh, Max, uh, Max Preps has them, I think, 35th in the country. So we got our hands full. But like I said, we can't overlook anybody. We're not good enough to take anybody for granted. So it's definitely going to be a week-by-week -week thing for us. Last year, unfortunately, I mean, come this time, you, you, know, you said you knew y'all why because y'all had some tragedy. Uh, kind of this year, what's, what's the motivation? To, to me, the motivation this year is to get them to love each other. You know, we have this conversation all the time. I don't need, I need every kid on our program to not say they're the best player on the team, but they're the best player for the team. Yeah. If I can get them to sell out for each other, then I think this year is going to be special. And don't get me wrong, even though it's been a year removed, Tyler's still in our, you know, still in our mindset because a lot of these guys still play with him. So I'm looking forward to them buying, totally buying in and playing with swag this year. So if we get that, then I think we'll be fine. Coach, I want to uh, add something on the scheduling piece uh, that Mr. Mahomes was, was uh, and you were referring to a few minutes ago. But um, I noticed you had a couple of uh, special dates there, a couple of Saturday dates. You want yes. to talk about that? So yes, we're playing in two classics this year. Mm -hmm. We're playing in the Henry County Classic, which was funny, which is a testament to Coach Jarvis, mm -hmm. because the, the, the Henry County Classic was supposed to put Henry County against four, four or five schools from different areas. But the problem was nobody in Henry County wanted to play either us or John. So they said, well, y'all had to play each other to be a part of that. So we're playing them the first week. Then we're playing in the Great Atlanta Bash, where all APS schools pick somebody to play. We're playing in that the second week. So our first two games are both Saturday games, and we really got to get our energy and, and get our endurance up because believe it or not, the first Saturday game is at 2, and the second Saturday game is at 4. Right. So we're going to be playing in the middle of the heat in August. So right. we got to get in shape. All right. And I want to add one more thing uh, that maybe you can just share with, uh, you know, the stakeholders of Douglas County. Last year we did something that was uh, – I, I thought it was unique. At the end of the season, uh, we brought together some seniors and some uh, head coaches from our high schools, and we got together and we went over and played uh, just an all-star game. Just briefly talk about I know it gets away from Douglas County High School, no, but you did spearhead there. Yeah, so we and appreciate and I, it. And I was totally upset about it because the <laughs> day before we started official practice, I found out I had COVID. Mm -hmm. So, but that Douglas County Classic, uh, the uh, Metro Atlanta Classic is, is something that I really want us to stick our hat on because it's still funny. And that's something, Derek, you may want to uh, reach out and talk about. When they do the all metro teams in the city of Atlanta, they don't include a Douglas County on any team. Not even the Cobb team, not the South Fulton team, because in the, in the minds of the AJC, we're still not part of metro Atlanta. And I think with the way we've been playing football here, not just Douglas County, but the county as a whole, I mean, what other county can say two years ago they had all five teams make the playoffs? Um, and I think that we need to start getting the recognition that we deserve. All these kids in this county work hard. And they lost the game by, I think, two or three points last year. But if I can get a lot of these seniors to play from this year's group of seniors in Douglas County, I think I don't care who we play, Atlanta, uh, Columbus, I think we can make it ugly. Okay. Number one is our returning running back, Latrell Morrell. Did a great job for us this year. We're expecting big things from him. Next slide. Number two, Hilton Alexander II, Wake Forest commit, wide receiver. Also a four-year guy. And the great thing that I can brag about this is all these guys have been in the program for most of the, at least three to four years. So uh, we're expecting big things out of Deuce. Number three, Monte Gooden, uh, return specialist. 
also plays receiver, plays a little DB. Four-year starter for us, has done a great job. Number five, Terion George, plays a DB as well as linebacker. Um, great young man, has got a couple. And all these guys have offers, and all these guys are good academically, which is really something to brag on. Number 15 is Zachariah Key. Um, he's already committed to Georgia Tech, uh, plays defensive end for us. He doesn't realize that he's going to play some tight end for us some as well. And then our man in the middle, all, uh, my fault, Zachariah also made All-State last year, along with Sha'Kai Woods, who was our county defensive player of the year, first team All-Region, made All-State, and uh, we're expecting big things from him when he, when he all returns back as well.